In fiction, no matter the setting, no matter the theme, no matter the genre, character writing remains the single most important thing about any story. Maybe only challenged by world building. Of course we have some outliers, but generally that's a rule of thumb. It's for that reason why for example Hercules is well known, however not many people know about his story or 12 labors. And in the world of anime, this still holds true. It's for that reason why Goku and Vegeta are well known, while not many people even know what the story is about, or even about the Dragon Balls, even if the show is named after them. And if we dive deeper into sports anime, that still holds true. One example I'd like to make is Kuroko no Basuke. The story in itself isn't really interesting. It's a bunch of kids trying to win a high school championship. However, I still get goosebumps from Aomini vs Kagami in the zone. And of course we can't forget about Akashi and his dominance. And surprising to no one, Blue Lock is the same. In fact, I think Blue Lock has one of the best character roster in anime. And that's a hell I'm willing to die on. And what captivates me the most about this is the fact that the characters aren't mainly written to deliver hype, be unique or wage war. And even though they do, trust me, they really really do, that's not the main point about them. I think the writer struck gold with his formula, which is writing characters to be a roadmap towards success and towards achieving huge feats. This is the most captivating thing about Blue Lock in my eyes. This is why chapters like 158 blew my mind and dare I say it changed my life. Every character serves a purpose, whether it be to show us healthy and rational behaviors that leads us towards success, or show us toxic and self-harming traits that might hold us from reaching our potential. And the result is one of the most interesting, most relatable characters. But more importantly, a character roster that exists only to better the life of the reader. And I understand this is not unique to the characters, as for example the main driving force to attain a new level, being the flow state, is so ingrained and so applicable in real life to achieve success that it should be taught in schools. However, in this video I want to focus on the characters. And for that I have chosen 4 characters to be the leading act of our tale today, which are Kaiser, Baro, Ren and of course Isigi. However, the list will not be exclusive to these four, as I will mention other characters like Noah and Nagi, who play a huge role in the world of Blue Lock, however, I don't think they deserve a section on their own. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive in. Of course, a list like this, I would have wanted to start with the main character. However, Isigi is such a complex character, that I think I would do you guys a disservice if I didn't keep him last, and first talk about the other three. And so the character that I will be starting with is the one that inspired this video. I'm talking about Michael Kaiser. He's a character that I really hated at first. To me, he seemed like a cocky version of Rin and Baro. Granted, he was talented, but all the trash talking or bullying wasn't really for me. But man, the writer has his way of turning things around. He went from the most hated main character to one I really respect. And funny enough, it's not because of his backstory. While it explained why he is like that, I still did not really like him nor care for him. In fact, it's what he has done after that. Seeing him realize his own weakness and his limiting way of thinking, and then him figuring out that he is afraid of losing a game rather than being afraid of losing himself due to his way of thinking was such a treat and piqued my interest immediately. And then we see him act upon this realization, shed his skin and start from zero building up his playing style with an open mind this time. This really made me respect the writer's delivery, as honestly I did not expect this to be the case at all. In fact, I was thinking Kaiser's awakening will be similar to Rin's berserker form. However, the writer threw us completely with something even more beautiful, as Kaiser actually shed his weakness instead of blindly following his ideal. And I can't help but think of another character who did the exact opposite. I'm talking about Yuki. When faced with a rational versus irrational decision, Yuki got completely engulfed by his emotions and while he found some success with dribbling past half a team, as Ego said it, there was no tangible way for him to score. And Yuki unfortunately was not able to reach his ideal. And this is because his full potential is shackled by his irrationality. And to be honest, I really loved it when I saw Kaiser do the exact opposite. I think this is what separates the legends from the commoners. As we can see in Blue Lock, players who are able to shed their own weakness and see beyond their emotions are destined to achieve the highest of levels, like Baro, Isigi, and now Kaiser. 
However, players that are short-sighted like Yuki are destined to struggle and not achieve anything big, as as I stated they are shackled by their inability to map out a logical road towards success. I can't stress this enough guys, like this is such a life-changing lesson that we can learn from the Kaiser vs Yuki situation. In order to reach your goals, you need to have a roadmap that is logically and not emotionally laid out. You need to have a logical and a rational answer to any question or roadblock in your path towards success. And I can't help but bring chapter 158 again. As Noah basically did not give Isigi metavision on a silver plate, kinda like how Snuffy did to borrow. In total contrast, he actually told Isigi what he needs to do, how he needs to think, in order to reach his full potential. And it even does not need to be metavision. Had Isigi had a different playing style, it would have probably been something else, and this is what I love about this chapter. This advice is actually worth gold, and is very applicable in real life to reach whoever you want to be. And funny enough, I really loved it when Noah was happy and excited for Kaiser achieving this on his own. Now obviously Kaiser failed in his first attempt because of Ren, however he still went outside of Isigi's thinking and go beyond his protagonist feeling. Something that Yuki failed miserably as he ran straight into Isigi's trap. However, I will not talk about the protagonist feeling here, and we'll leave it when we reach Isigi. What I want to talk about right now is actually what it means to do the logical thing. Now, in the Barsha game, Noah stated that in order to make it in this team, you either join the Kaiser system where Kaiser is the sole scorer, or you provide a logical and a tangible way of scoring other than utilizing the Kaiser system. Now, even though Kunigami's first goal doesn't even begin to compare to the Kaiser system which is highly efficient, Noah still believes in potential, in the fact that Isigi and Kunigami have shown seeds of their ability to achieve goals rationally. And with the proper nourishment, they can be as or even more effective than the Kaiser system, which is what we are seeing right now, as Isigi is basically far more effective than Kaiser. And funny enough, this is something that Yuki was totally blind to, as Isigi was basically doing what he could rationally to prove himself. Unlike Yuki who stuck to doing things in his imagination, and when the poor guy realized he hit a wall, it was already over, and had it not for Isigi's safe, he would have been forgotten about. And I think you guys should avoid being like Yuki. You need to keep your emotions in check and not let them get over you, even if you are a ticking bomb. And I think Yuki's backstory being that tragic, it's just to show you that even though you could be in the worst of situations, you should not under any circumstances let your emotions get ahead of you. Now, sticking to your ideals is not necessarily bad. In fact, it's even a good thing if you could build a rational road towards that ideal. Something the next character on our list excels at, I'm talking about Baro Shoei. Probably the most stubborn character in the series, and he has been a guy who always followed his ideal. However, when faced with adversity, and when he suffered his first defeat, instead of shedding everything like Kaiser, Baro actually developed a new path towards success, which was outside of everyone's vision. Now I'm not saying that what Baro did is better than Kaiser, in fact I don't think that's the intention from the writer. I think the writer is just showing us different ways you can achieve success and depending on your experience you employ what you see fit to your situation. However, I think the biggest lesson we could learn from Baro is not this, and actually is the fact that he is a man of his own creation. Now obviously this is a rational path towards success, he trains like hell. However, what I like about Baro's character and why he is my favorite is the fact that every weapon he has was forged by his hard work. And it makes sense why he is holding on to his ideals so tightly, it's because he worked really hard on them. However, just the discipline to train like hell obviously is not enough. Baro also presents the burning desire to always improve and to always reach new heights. This fire inside of him does not get burned out. Unlike for example Kaiser who used to become playful after scoring just one goal, Baro on the other hand is always on the hunt for a new goal, coupled with the fact that he understands his own talent because he worked really hard on it. Baro, in addition to Rin, are the only two characters that we see them score in every game they played at. That makes him and Rin the best strikers right now in Blue Lock. 
However, this feat was not achieved with just what I stated before. In fact, Baro presents another quality that is very essential to achieving success, which is him being unfathomable and uncontrollable. In the second selection, we actually got introduced to the real Baro, who is a character beyond logic. Of course, I don't mean that he doesn't employ logic, but what I mean is the fact that simply looking at his plays logically doesn't tell the full story. It actually doesn't even begin to scratch the surface with him. He's a character who always found an alternative path that blasts him towards success and took his opponents by surprise. Hell, not even his teammates or coach are sometimes able to figure out what he is doing. And what makes it very impressive is the fact that this uncontrollability of his is very logical. He always does the rational thing that no one else thought about. And this is exactly what the writer wants us to learn from Baro. This ability to be beyond everyone's thinking and to be ahead of everybody around you. But most importantly, this ability to find a rational path that no one else could even think about will give you such a competitive edge in any area that you're trying to compete for and will blast you towards success. Now, you can deduct just from this that Baro presents a level of adaptability because being uncontrollable means you have to be adaptable. A guy that can be pushed into a corner and cannot adapt from there is a guy that can be controlled and that's the opposite of what the writer is trying to tell us. Now, again, I'm not gonna talk about adaptability that much here because it's a thing that best explored with Isigi, so let's leave it for that. For now, we actually jump to the third character, which is Rune Itoshi. Now, Rin's purpose in the story is actually the role model. He is the ideal player in the eyes of Blue Lock. So, what does that mean? Well, Rin is actually very talented. He has an insane well-rounded physicality, an innate talent for football, and an astonishingly high soccer IQ. And of course, we can't forget about his eyes. However, I think the case with Rin, he has one glaring weakness, which is summed up by this saying, So much sight, so little vision. Ren is such an OP character that he constantly ignores everything that he deems below him, kinda like he did with Isigi until the latter pushed him into madness. And I think this is his only weakness. Sometimes Ren is way too focused on his playing style that he forgets the little things. Sometimes you need to account for the little things, as they might be the things that propel you towards reaching your full potential, something that Ren excels at avoiding, and it is showing. Even with his awakening, it seems like he threw everything away, which again, I really don't like. And the case with Ren is that I hoped after what Isigi did to him, he will be able to recognize this weakness and adapt beyond it. However, in the PXG game, he's still shown the same thing. Even though Charles said he is contrarian, Ren did not care enough to actually understand what that means, and we see him really struggling with Charles, but in complete contrast, someone like Hiyori was able to analyze, adapt, and then overcome Charles. And obviously, I think this requires the protagonist feeling because he understood that he is very contrarian. While Rin, even though he had that knowledge, he still did not pay much attention to it. And we find him still perfectly positioning himself for Charles, even though he knows he is a contrarian and he will not go for the easy perfect thing. And I hope you guys understand this lesson very well. Sometimes you have to be able to identify potential and not deem anything below you useless because some little things may adapt and even surpass you at times. And speaking of this, we reach Isigi mother freaking Yoichi, the meat and potatoes of this video. Now, when I first read the first chapter, I found it odd that Isigi in an instant switched from a very nice and a naive guy to this ruthless, very egotistical character. However, as the series progressed, I think it fits perfectly. I think Isigi was nice before and he was very friendly because of the environment he was in. However, once that environment changed and once he felt the ruthlessness of Blue Lock, Isigi switched. His ego did not just come out of nowhere. In fact, it came from that very sensation of the danger of Blue Lock. And this is such an important lesson, guys, and I think you guys have already figured it out. As the famous martial artist Bruce Lee said, Be like water, making its way through cracks. Don't be assertive, but adjust to the object, and you shall find a way around or through it. If nothing within you stays rigid, outward things will disclose themselves. Empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. If you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, and it becomes the bottle. However, water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. 
And this is the essence of Isiki's whole personality. Isiki is very malleable, not in that people can control him, but he can very easily and very routinely adapt to any environment he finds himself in. Whether be it against geniuses like Baro and Ren, or against his friends like Chigiri and Bachiro, or even against whole systems like the Kaiser one. Isigi always finds a way to adapt and assert himself into that situation. And if nothing less, if you can take one lesson from this video, I hope it is this one. Yuki's blindness was because he was not like water. He was rigid and he did not adapt to the environment. He did not adapt to Chris Prince. And like Isigi, who even though did not find his way through Kaiser and Prince, he found his way around them by utilizing Noah and Corona. And actually, this is how an average Joe like Isigi can go toe and -to toe with Ren, Kaiser, and Nagi. Granted, Isigi trains like hell as well, and lately he became obsessed kinda like Baro and Ren at their trainings. Something that Nagi fails miserably at, and Nagi is struggling right now because of that very reason. But that's Nagi's weakness. Let me ask you guys this, what about Isigi? If he is like water, if he is shapeless, if he can adapt to anything, does this mean Isigi has no weakness? Well, that's the beauty of it. Isigi is full of weaknesses. Isigi is constantly failing, but he never lets that put him down. When he failed against Baro, for example, he said he has no image of stopping him. Instead, he had an image of scoring. Another weakness would be his shooting ability. His direct shot requires him to be completely free, as we have seen a simple tackle from Sai was enough to throw Isigi completely off balance. However, he still found his way, much like water. And this is the beauty of it, even if you are full of weaknesses, and as a human you are, being malleable, being able to adapt will always burst you into new heights and always cover for those weaknesses. And this way you do not approach your weakness with fake it until you make it, rather you approach the subject with real, rational adaptability, something that I really love about the main character of this show. Now, the amazing thing about adaptability is as time goes and as new challenges present themselves, brick by brick, Isigi was able to build himself, going from a guy who had a very conditional direct shot, to now a player who can shoot with both legs, have a feint and can easily place himself completely free of defenders, which gives him the highest scoring chances in the U20 category right now, which is honestly such a beautiful evolution. What it means for us, however, is as you move up in the ladder of life, you adapt more and more and more, and you build yourself and you build your character to the point you can handle pretty much any situation life throws you in. And much like Rocky said, no one hits as hard as life, and so being able to adapt to that and to prepare yourself for that is the ultimate life lesson. Now, something as broken as adaptability cannot exist in the real world without having any trade-offs or any risks. So what do I mean by this? Well, while adapting, make sure that the new bricks you acquire fit together. Otherwise, you will find yourself splattered, shattered and trying to do everything while not doing a great job at anything. And how does that relate to Isiki? Well, think about it this way. In the Ubers game, we officially got introduced to the Predator Eyes and a lot of fans speculated that Isiki might adapt and acquire the Predator Eyes. However, I kept saying it in my videos and I said it in my Discord server or any community hub that Predator Eyes really do not fit with Isigi's playing style and Isigi's ideal. Isigi aims to be free with a goalkeeper so he can 100% score, while Predator Eyes pretty much serve the purpose of translating your shots into goals. However, in Blue Lock 101 with a goalkeeper, it's very easy to score, and so Isigi learning Predator Eyes will just hinder him. In fact, he really does not fit with his playing style, and if he tries to shoot in a crowded area, well, we already know what happens. And so the writer clearly shown us, even though Isigi knows about the Predator Eyes, he did not even try or attempt to learn them. Why? Because they do not fit with his playing style. Simple as that. As in real life, this lesson is actually the exact opposite of the Rin lesson. You really shouldn't focus on everything. Rather, you should be selective on what to focus on. You need to have an eye, you need to have an understanding of potential. Something that Isigi excels at with his protagonist feeling. Which also could be applied in real life. If you train yourself, if you train your eye to understand other people's motives, you can have an edge over them. This is such an insane weapon to use in a corporate environment as you can pretty much understand what everyone is going after and navigating the ladder having an edge by exploiting other people's desires. Kinda like how Isigi did to Yuki or how Hiyori was able to stop Charles. 
However, I think this is enough for one video. Is there any lesson that you learned from Blue Lock that I did not cover? Tell me in the comments below. And well, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it. And until next time, thank you for watching.